Good morning, everyone. I am Kai Zhao from Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, and uh, it is my great pleasure to be here and uh, present my work. So uh, in recent years, NAND flash memory is adopted in an incre increasingly wide range from consumer electronics to uh, enterprise applications. One reason for this is the decreasing bit cost. Uh, this is because uh, as the technology is scaling down from 100 nanometers to sub-20 nanometers, the cost per, per gigabyte of NAND flash memory has decreased from $10 uh, in 2007 to $1 in 2010, and uh, even to tens of cents uh, recently. But unfortunately, uh, meanwhile, the noise in the NAND flash memory becomes more severe. Uh, here is the basic organization of NAND flash memory. The, the flash cells are connected by bit lines and word lines, and a block consists of several word lines. So for a single flash cell, we know this is called a floating gate transistor, uh, and the electrons is trapped in the floating gate. These electrons could, uh, ch uh, could change the threshold voltage of this transistor. And the threshold voltage actually determines what data we stored in this, in this cell. And under the uh, floating gate is an oxide layer. There are many charge traps in this layer caused by continuous uh, program erase cycles. And this is the reason why a flash cell wears out after too many PE cycles. So with today's technology scaling down, the cell size and the distance between, cell, uh, between cells shrinks, and the oxide layer becomes thinner and thinner. Besides, the number of electrons that can be held in the floating gate also reduce. reduce. So all these factors make the flash memory increasingly noisy. So here I lot at least the three main noisy sources uh, in, in this slide. So the first one is the cell-to-cell -cell interference. A flash cell suffers from interference from uh, when its neighbors are being programmed or erased. So this will generate noise. The second one is the random telegraph noise. Those charge traps in the oxide layer could uh, uh, randomly capture and emit electrons, and these electrons also change the threshold voltage of the flash memory. The last one is the retention noise. Electrons leaks from the floating gate as the time elapses, so this also changes the uh, threshold voltage, thus changes the data in, stored in the flash memory. So all this noise uh, have the same consequence, that is, uh, the raw bit error rate in NAND flash memory becomes higher and higher. So in SSDs, we use the error correction code to control these errors. Uh, BCH code uh, is named after its inventors. Uh, this code, this uh, BCH code is adopted in all the SSDs today. But as the raw bit error rate is getting higher and higher as the technology is getting down, uh, LTPC code has attracted much attention because it has a much a stronger error correction cap, uh, capability than BCH code. Uh, here is a simulation result that shows the uh, superiority of LTPC code. It can tolerate 10, ten times the raw bit error rate uh, compared to BCH code. Uh, here, uh, the, green the green curve is the hard decision LTPC code, and the uh, blue curve is the soft decision LTPC code. I will explain these two concepts in the later slide. Uh, so, since BCH code becomes inadequate, LTPC code is being seriously considered in the uh, industry as the, as the error correction code for future SSDs. But there is still some uh, challenges for adopting uh, LTPC such as how to design a RTPC code of very good performance. But in this paper, our study is focused on how to minimize the RTPC-induced read latency in SSDs. So this is the outline of my slides. First, I will introduce some basic concept of RTPC code and soft decision. This is uh, also the motivation for our work. Uh, then I will uh, introduce the proposed techniques to mitigate the uh, read, uh, read latency uh, penultimate. 
and then it's the experiment setup and experimental results. Finally, I will conclude my talk. Uh, so there are two uh, algorithms in decoding uh, the code words. So hard decision decoding is supported by both BCH and LTPC. The inputs to the decoder are in binary form, so the hardware implementation, implementation is simple, uh, but the error correction capability is relatively weak. And uh, LTPC supports the soft decision decoding. The inputs are quantized to several bits, uh, that is in integers. So the hardware design is complicated, but it has a much stronger error correction capability. For LTPC code, its error correction strength strongly depends on the accuracy of the input information. Here, the input information presents the probability information of the data we stored in a NAND flash memory. So what does this mean? Here, if we store the data in the NAND flash memory, after we read them out, they suffer from all the noises I just introduced. So we have to put the data into a decoder to correct these errors. So for hard decision, uh, we read this 10110 from NAND flash, uh, flash memory and feed them into the decoder. But for soft decision, we, we, we quantize this, uh, the, the data from uh, flash memory into integers. So what does this integer mean? Uh, here, don't look at the equation, just look at the box. So positive integers here means zero and the negative integers here means one. And the larger uh, is the magnitude, the more likely it is a one or zero. So in this sequence, we know that negative one and the positive one is likely to be wrong because the magnitude is very small. And uh, such as negative four is almost definitely to be data one because it has the largest magnitude, means it has the largest probability. So this is the voltage threshold distribution. Uh, for hard decision, we sense the flash cell in the middle of the distribution. So if the threshold is located on the, on the, on the left of the, of, uh, of the sense level, so we know this is data zero. And if it is located on the right, this is data, uh, on the right is data zero. But for the soft decision, we need to sense seven times, separating the whole region uh, into eight subregions. So here, region one corresponds to negative four, and region eight corresponds to uh, positive three. So here is a, a simple uh, example. If we have two flash cells, and the two bits are stored in them, so if we use the hard decision, we will read a sequence of one, one. But if we use the soft decision, uh, we read out the sequence negative four and negative one. So if I tell you there is a, Bit error, bit error in this sequence. For hard decision, we don't know which one is zero. But for the second, because negative one has a very small possibility to be data one, so we can guess uh, perhaps the negative one is wrong. So the data it should be one and zero. So this is why LTPC code could uh, uh, effectively take, uh, take advantage of this probability information and get uh, outstanding error correction capability. However, we can see from this table, for hard decision sensing, uh, we only need to sense once and uh, transfer one bit from the flash chip to the controller, while for the soft decision, we need to sense seven times and uh, transfer three bits to the controller. So the soft decision decoding suffers from a huge latency, and this huge latency is destructive to the read performance of SSDs. This is totally unacceptable. So first, we propose a two-step read strategy. Uh, this is based on the ob observation that uh, hard decision decoding is still capable to handle errors uh, in most of the time. So we start with the fast hard decision sensing and decode, use the hard decoding to correct the errors. Uh, if the read operation happens in the early lifetime of a flash memory, or the rotation time is very short, so uh, this hard decision is enough to correct the errors. But if it fails, then we start the slow, soft decision sensing and decoding to correct uh, the errors. Uh, here shows the effectiveness of the two-step strategy. Uh, our trace-based simulation uh, shows that 
when the hard decision uh, decoding failure rate is very low, this uh, two-step strategy works very well. But uh, when the hard decision failure rate reaches 30%, we can see for some read-intensive uh, traces, the read response time uh, delay still doubles. So further improvement is necessary. There are two aspects to reduce the read latency. The first one is to minimize the latency of soft decision sensing and the data transfer. The second, to minimize the unnecessary number of uh, sensings of the high precision soft decision sensings. So we proposed the three techniques based on the two, uh, two aspects. Uh, look ahead sensing, progressive sensing and decoding, and the data interleaving. I will introduce them one by one. So the first one, uh, the look ahead memory sensing. In the two-step method, we start the soft sensing after the LDPC decoder in the SD controller reports an error. That is, the hard decision decoding fails, then we start the soft decoding. But actually, we don't have to wait so long for, to start the soft sensing. We could start the soft sensing immediately after the hard sensing finishes. Thus, we could overlap in the two uh, operations and save some time. The second technology is the progressive sensing and decoding. So from the simulation result of the three uh, ECC codes, we can see that there is a large uh, space between the soft decision LDPC code and the hard decision LDPC code. So uh, we could uh, make some trade-off between this last uh, space. Here is a new uh, simulation result. Uh, this result shows the graceful trade-off between error correction capability and the soft decision sensing precision. Uh, the green curve uh, corresponds to the hard decision sensing. Uh, the red one corresponds to that we sense one extra level. The blue one corresponds to that we sense uh, the, se second, the third level. The black one corresponds to we sense the fourth and the fifth level. And the last one, the pink one, corresponds to within the sixth and the seventh level. So it has the strongest error correction capability. So in, uh, in SSD controller, we could gradually increase the error correction capability instead of directly jump to the highest precision decoding. So this is the flow chart for the progressive sensing. Uh, we still start with the hard decision sensing, sensing and decoding. But uh, if it, is, it is fails, we only increase one or two sensing level and read code. So this process continues until the decoding succeeds or we reach the full strength seven level decoding capability. And these te techniques can be combined with the look ahead memory sensing design strategy. The last one is the data interleaving. This is based on uh, the fact that the, the, uh, the reliability vary, varies among different NetFlex chips. That, uh, so pages from, uh, from one chip perhaps uh, subject to a low error rate, while pages from another chip perhaps suffers from a high error rate. So we can average them to get a moderate uh, error rate and avoid invoking the high precision decoding. Uh, here is an example. We can reorganize four LTPC code words to get four interleaved pages. Thus, we can average the uh, error, error, error rate and uh, reduce the probability to in invoking the high precision uh, decoding and the sensing. Of course, we can also average two chips or average eight chips. So ne next is the experiment setup and the preparation. We use the disk sim uh, simulator as, uh, to uh, quantitatively evaluate our, the read response time with six uh, different traces. And uh, the configuration of SSD is listed here. So this is a 256 gigabyte, gigabyte uh, SSD. And uh, since we module the uh, flash net memory chip as an, uh, as an MLC, so we treat the upper page and the lower page separately. And uh, we get this uh, latency parameter using our hardware platform <coughs> by marrying some uh, 25 nanometer commercial NAND, uh, MLC NAND flash chips. 
and the latency of sensing one extra level is an estimated value. This value is estimated based on the read latency difference between the upper page and the lower page. Finally, we set the P cycles to 10,000, and we set the retention time to one month. So the last thing, the last thing to do is uh, we need to get the error rate statistics. Here is the experiment flow of, of in our paper. We run 10,000 PE cycles in a few hours. But in real life, uh, in real applications, so many PE cycles usually take about months or, two, uh, one, two, or two years uh, to get such uh, high PE cycles. <coughs> so we bake the chips to emulate this process. Then we program random data into the chips and then bake the chip to emulate the one month retention time. Finally, we read out the data and compare them with the original data to get the page error, uh, page error rate statistics. Uh, there is more details in our paper. You can see why we bake the chips and how we calculate the big time and the big temperature. So this is the result. Here is the page BR distribution for four different chips. Uh, each distribution uh, is made from over 4,000 pages, randomly distributed in the whole chip. So we can see the reliability vari variance between chips and between upper and uh, lower pages. So in chip three and chip four, it is very clear that uh, there, uh, the upper page and the lower page has different reliability. Now we have the LDPC error correction capability curve we have all the time uh, parameters, and we have the page BR statistics. So we can put these parameters into our simulator and start our simulation. So here is the two-step uh, two strategy as our baseline. We can see from uh, this result that uh, those traces suffers from a 30% to over 100% read response time penalty. And this figure shows the look ahead sensing uh, strategy. Uh, this strategy could modestly reduce the read latency, about 20%. So this figure shows the effectiveness of the progressive sensing and decoding. The read response time penalty is reduced to less than 50% for all the traces. And if we combine these two techniques together, we can further reduce the uh, read, -response time, uh, read response time penalty to less than 30%. And uh, the last, uh, this figure shows the results for data interleaving. We simulated both the two-way and the four-way interleaving respectively. And uh, this technique could also modestly reduce the latency. So finally, after we combine all the techniques together, the read response time penalty uh, could be dramatically reduced to less than 20% for all the six traces. So considering uh, the great improvement in reliability, this is a reasonable read response time delay for the real application. And of course, uh, these techniques come with their own overheads. The higher energy consumption is inevitable in soft decision sensing and decoding because we have seen from the previous slides, we need to sense many more times and transfer many more data from the chip to the controller. But in our paper, we quantitatively show that our approaches actually could mitigate this read energy consumption as well. You can see some detailed results in our paper. And this, uh, these techniques, of course, will complicate the controller design. Um, finally, the right amplification. The interleaving technique might cause uh, a right amplification, and uh, this overhead still needs further study or quantitatively uh, evaluated. So here is my conclusion. Increased noise in NAND flash memory today caused by the technology scaling is a main reason for increasingly high error rates in SSDs. And the conventional ECC, such as BCH, does not have sufficient ability to make error code corrections. 
So LTPC is a strong ECC candidate for future SSDs to address its reliability issues under high noises. And in this paper, we proposed the three techniques to make the LTPC code work effectively in SSD. With LTPC in SSD, the SSDs can continue to increase its capacity, retain a high reliability, and reduce its prices. Thank you for your attention. So. Any questions? Joe Tuchek, HP Labs. Uh, so I seem to remember uh, that uh, with uh, when we started using RAID systems, um, that the disk manufacturers started essentially disabling some of their retry and error correction because the idea was that the higher level uh, would uh, fix that. So given that you've now sort of given the same sort of it might take, you know, the disk might go out to lunch while, uh, while servicing your request because of errors, uh, do you have some idea how that behavior could be tuned given the application that the drive might be put into? Uh, sorry, so you mean the, the higher levels could correct these errors? Yes, yes, so... Uh, uh, I think in today's SSDs, uh, the PCH code would never be terminated because on the flash memory, the raw bit error rate is, is actually very high. I don't think the higher level could terminate, uh, could uh, uh, skip this step. The, we have to have the ECC in the controller. If there is still some errors left, but this probably is very small, so this can be corrected by the higher level. Yeah. I, I have a question about the interleaving. Okay. If you interleave uh, pages of different quality, yeah. This is a highly suboptimal in terms of uh, coding theory. Yeah. Did you consider telling the decoder something about uh, the quality of the page to improve the error correction? Uh, you mean interleave between pages? No. Uh, you change. interleave pages of different qualities. In some you have high error rate. Yeah. Some you have lower. Yeah, this, this is uh, interleaved uh, different pages of different reliability, yeah. I know, but I'm saying that uh, not telling the decoder that a priori the pages are different is highly suboptimal. Yeah. Did you consider uh, improving the decoder by telling him how to differentiate between the different pages? Uh, you mean, it, it, we can improve the decoder, but it, it, it has a upper bound. If there is too many errors, it can't handle. We cannot uh, infinitely improve the decoder. So if, but if we average the, average the error rate between different chips, perhaps if some chips, uh, some pages is too bad to be corrected, after we average the error rate, it might be corrected. And uh, in this paper, actually we focus on the effect that this can reduce the read latency. But of, of course, this interleaving could improve the reliability as well. Okay, thank you. Hi, uh, Pete Harley from Seagate. So in your progressive scan, do you use the hard decisions um, to decide which voltage level to um, sense next? Or is it a set? Um, uh, then we just start from the hard, uh, since the first level, second, third. Yeah. If when you it, choose, is it different cell to cell for your second threshold? Uh, different. Uh, um, so if you chose a half volt for the first sense level, for uh, yeah. zeros would you choose 0 0.6, and for ones would you choose 0 0.4 for the second sense level? Uh, or we can take it offline and. Uh, it could provide more. Involved. Better decisions on the LLRs as the soft information to the LDPC decoder. It's, it's a related question to the other question. Uh, you mean the soft information? Yeah, it's, it's not about the latency, but about uh, recovery rate. Uh, okay. Maybe, maybe okay. we'll take it offline. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um,
Okay. Thank you all. Thank you.